Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Bucket Ponce, and today I'm going to show you how to turn a simple 2 liter bottle into a nice planted snail aquarium. I'll do my best to keep it short and to the point to uh, help hold your interest, and there we go. Uh, first thing you should do is clean and wash the 2 liter. Uh, this is just a common 2 liter bottle. Uh, next, we're going to cut the lid off. Be very careful not to cut yourself. Uh, don't worry too much about uh, you know keeping it straight. We're going to trim it up with some scissors here in just a second. Uh, just like that. Nothing fancy, you know, we're just getting the sharp edges off of there. Perfect. Next up, we're going to find our substrate. I like to use marble chunks and uh, pond pebbles. Uh, these are commonly available at home improvement stores. And yes, they are aquarium safe. Marble will uh, leach calcium into your water. And I suggest that you uh, be prepared for that. But I like to do that for my snails and it helps their shells. The pond pebbles are just for decoration. They add a nice contrast with the white stone. Now these are commonly available at home improvement stores. You can find them everywhere. Just make sure you wash and rinse them thoroughly. Uh, next up, we're gonna add some water. There we go, it's a little cloudy. I did wash these stones beforehand, but you know, we still have a few small particles that get into the water. Next up, we have our plants. This is actually a macroalgae called Nutella, a freshwater macroalgae. Make sure everything goes into the water. You can use other submerged plants if you choose. In a project like this, I like to use both aquatic uh, submerged plants, floating plants, and emergent plants. That way I cover all of my bases and uh, I increase the uh, filtration in the aquarium. Alright, we have here some more Nutella, harvested from one of my other aquariums. This is also loaded with snail eggs and paramecium and detritus worms and my other creatures that I culture. They're very important to the way that I run these nano tanks and if you're one of the people that seeks to destroy all your bladder snails and to remove all your detritus worms, I just you're probably watching the wrong videos. Here we're adding some dayflower. This is climbing dayflower, uh, commonly available throughout the world. One of my favorite emergent plants. I just stick the stems in here and uh, generally it'll correct itself after a while. Once it roots, it'll start to grow up out of the water. And uh, here's another one. I always pluck off the bottom one or two leaves uh, to encourage root growth down there. And those leaves will rot underwater if left unchecked. So It's best to remove those lower leaves just for that reason. And here we have another stem, same thing, just going to pluck one or two leaves. Uh, typically I would plant two or three different kinds of uh, emergent plants, but in this particular aquarium I want the dayflower to be dominant. I want dayflower to grow up out of the water. I want floating plants uh, like mud midget and duckweed. They're at the water level at the surface. And I want my Nutella to really take over underwater. Uh, once it gets established, it's very powerful. It will fill up this entire container with more Nutella. And it's quite beautiful. Here we have one of my homemade pipettes uh, full of paramecium and detritus worms. You may have seen something like this in my other videos. These are very useful for the way that I do these tanks. And here we have my larger uh, homemade pipette, which you've probably seen in my other videos. Um, I use this one for what I called my domesticated tanks, and the other smaller injector is used for my wild samples, which I will occasionally include in tanks like these. And once again, we're just going to squirt them in there and try not to disturb things too much. Alright, next up we have bladder snails and some floating plants. This is called Florida Mud Midget and it is a type of duckweed. It does not resemble duckweed, but it is related to it. Um, the duckweed is very important to my method of aquariums because it forms like a, almost like a surface substrate in which creatures like water mites and detritus worms and other things tend to live and uh, they even consume it. The snails will eat it as it wilts. They'll, you know, it's generally a very useful plant and often overlooked and misunderstood in the aquarium hobby. Here you can see some of the uh, bladder snails, and there's even a couple pond snails in here, which I should mention. But here you can see them exploring and generally getting accustomed to their new home as I adjust some of the plants and, you know, I move a few things around. Uh, the tank looks a little cloudy still, but that will settle soon. And keep in mind that you can use completely different plants and still succeed. My plants originally came from wild samples, which I've taken home and cultivated and grown and reproduced. And fell in love with. What can I say? Uh, but there's the tank. It looks great and I wouldn't change a thing. Uh, but I do have one addition I need to make before we're really done. Now what would that addition be you might be asking? 
Uh, well, it is a fossilized piece of snail shells, uh, ancient snail shells, uh, which has been cut into the shape of a heart pennant. Originally, I bought this for my wife as a gift, but it was just a little too large for her to wear as a necklace. Uh, still, it's quite beautiful, and I think it'll be interesting for the snails to be reunited with some of their long-lost ancestors in the form of this fossilized stone. And this is uh, the uh, Valentine's Day Aquarium, so a heart-shaped stone is a perfect addition. It's also very special to my wife and I, and this tank will be a gift for her. So let's find a nice place to put this heart stone. All right, down in here somewhere. There we go, that's perfect. Uh, now it would be nice if it was like a red color or something, but that's fine, we don't need to worry about that. Everything in here looks pretty nice, and over time as the tank grows, uh, plants will settle, they'll find their place, and they'll uh, root themselves. Even the Nutella, it doesn't really root, but it will send strands down into the substrate and grab onto the rocks and things. And I've placed the heart stone in a place where it should be uh, fairly visible, even as things grow and take over the tank. Uh, I don't believe it'll be dissolved or damaged in any way. I'm very proud of this project. Uh, it came out quite nice, and it's only going to get nicer as things grow. And of course, it wouldn't be a Bucket Ponds Aquarium without a slice of cucumber. Um, these cucumbers power my tanks, um, they feed my creatures, that cucumber will be directly turned into more detritus worms and more bladder snails and pond snails, and of course they will in turn make fertilizer for the plants. It's a beautiful system. Um, this is not a sealed ecosphere, but I have made a sealed 2 liter ecosphere before, and it's still alive, uh, going on what one or two years later. But as you can see, the snails have already made their way up to the cucumber, they're investigating, they're exploring, and that makes me very happy. Uh, let's see if we can get a few clips of the detritus worms just so that uh, I can prove that they're in there. And uh, I just like to show them, they're very fun. So let's jump on that. Here we have a baby bladder snail with tons of detritus worms and some paramecium and things. Uh, over time they will overpopulate this container and they'll serve as an uh, excellent culture to grow more and to spread them around even further. All right, here's a great look at one of the pond snails. Uh, you can kind of see his little face. It's still a little cloudy in there. And he's a little sluggish, uh, but that makes sense. You know, these guys came all the way from Puerto Rico to uh, join the Bucket Ponds family, and we're happy to have them. There's his little eyes, that black dot. And I'm willing to bet that he will make his way up to the cucumber here pretty soon. Uh, I don't know much about these pond snails yet, and I've spoken with a few hobbyists in the comment sections here on YouTube um, who have uh, suggested that it may take a while for them to lay some eggs. But I am hopeful that we can uh, accelerate that process by offering high-quality foods like uh, fresh fruit, cucumber in particular, along with any wilted leaves and a bit of duckweed and anything else they can find to eat in the container. Uh, I believe that this has worked well for the bladder snails which are a very different species. It's very important to note, I am now raising two different species of aquatic snails, and I'm very proud of that. But yes, I am hopeful that we will get these pond snails breeding very soon, and I'm happy to include them in this Valentine's Day Aquarium. So there she is, guys, the uh, Valentine's Day Aquarium built from an upcycled two liter bottle. And in this case, upcycled simply means that I repurposed and recycled a container which was otherwise meant to be thrown away. In my experience, these 2-liter bottles will last at least a year, if not longer. Uh, I haven't had any problems yet, uh, though originally I was worried about it breaking down and possibly uh, leaking or cracking, but that hasn't happened. They're pretty durable, and I think they're designed that way to hold soda and acidic liquids like that, so this should be fine. The heartstone looks great. Uh, it should be a perfect place for viewing long term, and I hope my wife really enjoys this tank. Uh, I can help her take care of them, and that goes for anybody out there too. If you're looking to start uh, the aquarium hobby, I suggest you start small. Start with something like this before you move on to a fish in like a, a true uh, aquarium, uh, because you know you'll learn a lot, and you'll uh, be better prepared when you do finally get some guppies or some tetras or something like that. And so anyway guys, it's past my bedtime. I'm your best buddy Bucket Ponds, and I gotta go. Thanks so much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Um, it might take me a day or two, but I will get to your comments. And I love talking with friends about this stuff. Uh, and there's not too many people into detritus worms and bladder snails and 
you know, it's rare when you meet a buddy who's uh, into them too. So thanks so much for watching. Please check out my other videos and tell me what you think. I hope everybody has a great Valentine's Day and whatever you're going to do, make it special. Even if you're just hanging around watching Netflix with your special person. So thanks again.